Hello, I'm your host, Ali Nihan, and welcome to Make It Happen, episode number 12. And today I'm talking to Jo Bendel. Jo's mission is to help women ditch overwhelm. Using habits, we can create freedom in our businesses. As Jo says, it's not about what you know, but what you do. Hello, Jo. Hello, hello. Welcome. So I'd like to find out more about Jo Bendel and what Jo actually does. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm actually a productivity, uh, a productivity coach. I work with uh, women in business who are tired of being held back by perfectionism and procrastination and inaction. Um, and I work with them to give them tools and support to like ditch overwhelm and then allow them to like focus and finally create that freedom that they originally set out to create when they started their business. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, is far too common, unfortunately, is that we, no one actually starts a business to work harder and to earn less. And it's the reality of a lot of people. So it's my mission to change that basically with um, the, the way that I do it. And my audience is all over the world. And I get to hang out with amazing women talking about all my favorite things. So yeah, that's me. Brilliant. So that's your superpower. Yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, actually, helping women was what I meant by your super. Yeah, <laughs> what I'm talking about your power is five <laughs> So, tell us something about Joe that we might not know. Um, I think the probably the best thing to share there is that I'm a productivity coach, but I am not the most productive person I know. Okay. Um, um, and what I mean by that is that we don't have to be. You know, like I, I often try and say to people, even if you just increase it and focus on this like a 10% more than you're currently doing it's going to have such a massive impact so I am somebody that restrict resists structure and craves freedom and um, and so it's very you know it's maybe not the typical person that you think of as a productivity coach but that's because you know like finding a roadmap that allows me to still have that level of flexibility but still show up for my goals and my dreams and my desires yeah. um so i think yeah just basically i'm not the most productive person i know and i'm a productivity coach is that okay? <laughs> brilliant so how did your professional journey start so how have you ended up being a productivity coach i think it's been quite a journey and now when i look back on it it makes complete sense but obviously when we're at the start we can't yeah. see it and we haven't got the clarity um so I actually, when I, over 20 years ago now, I started being like a personal assistant and I worked in London and really supported sort of CEOs and directors of big companies and was an executive assistant and, and really um, did that. That was like my career. I moved around lots of different things and then eventually started my own business as a virtual assistant. So then I was really supporting uh, entrepreneurs and the whole time I was able to, well, I was immersing myself with people that are very very successful um and at that time you know i had no idea i didn't know anything about the online underworld that i've kind of met fallen into <laughs> now but um uh, so it was interesting to see just how they show up you know like i'm really serious like how their daily habits um and you can really clearly see why they are successful um and it's evolved and evolved from there that i ended up about four years ago transitioning into being a productivity coach um, and really helping people with the struggles that I'd had. Like I was like, I know what I should be doing, but I'm not doing it. Um, and, um, and so finding a way to be able to go like, this is my big juicy dream and I am not showing up for it. What, you know, like what can change and like, just like step by step finding like this beautiful process that has allowed me to um, achieve the things that I want, you know, achieve some really big dream dreams of mine. And so, yeah, supporting other people to do that is, um, yeah, it's really, really fulfilling role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. And you have on your website that you actually help women get out of their own way. So yeah. do, you, do you think we are our own worst enemies? Uh, oh, I definitely do. And I say that from complete and utter, like, uh, insider knowledge of my own journey. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, like, uh, there's, there's a, um, a quote that I talk about um, on one of my, I was just doing a webinar. So I've got one of the slides in my head. And it was like, you know, you're far too smart to be the only thing standing in your own way. But we are the thing that's standing in our own way. And um, 
so part of the work that I do is like, yeah, there's this really practical side of like taking action and like, you know, getting rid of what's not serving us. But also what, there's something what I call productivity blocks. And this is what about, this is about, you know, getting in your own way. It's like perfectionism, um, procrastination, shy, bright, shiny objects. Like why are they so fascinating? Um, Self-doubt. Um, and I think that those four things are the way that we keep ourselves safe. You know, our minds are so sophisticated, they kind of will tell us something and we'll believe it. But ultimately, it's keeping us safe from stepping outside the comfort zone and doing something that feels really uncomfortable, but that potentially will lead to bigger, amazing results. And that is quite fearful. So um, that's why I talk about that's what I mean by like we are, we, we get in our own way and uh, we need to really com um, bring both these sides of like this practical side of doing of being able to take action and, and get through the never-ending to lose but this feminine side of like what's really going on um so yeah it's um and I, so i generally say that i work with women in business but i do also work with men, men as well but but honestly they don't get in they don't um suffer the same way as we do you know like a lot of people a lot of men will have an action list and they'll do it whereas we will go oh um i'm just gonna circle around that because um uh, so yeah, yeah that um, that's what that's about. Yeah, it's so yeah. yeah, the the thumb scrolling on Facebook. Yeah, that's yeah. where we need to be writing something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you say were your personal roadblock blocks, and how have you dealt with them? Oh, my my biggest roadblock, without a doubt, is self doubt, and has been self doubt like for the whole of my journey, which is why I feel like I'm really qualified to say. Um, you know, the stuff that I talk about, I'm, and I share it, you know, I share with my clients that, um, you know, I still suffer, I still struggle with it. Some, sometimes I've got, I've got a lot of things in my toolkit now that really help me, but I still fall off wagon and get, get stuck in the self-doubt. Um, but I've got different things that help me and there are lots of different mindset strategies that um, can just keep you... Um, it can kick that can help us but the reality is it isn't something that just disappears it's probably going to be with me the whole time it's just that when i fall off the wagon or when the self-doubt really hits me hard instead of it writing me off for weeks or months it now writes me off for days right. only days or even a day because i've got these um i've actually got these foundational habits that allow me to get back on again um, you know, and it, it can be just, it's, it's consistency. Like we're going to constantly need to journal or like really look at the stories that our mind is telling us and things like that. Um, and so I, I think that's just that I know that that's got to be part of my non-negotiables because, um, this is something that, that can come up and wipe me out. And, um, yeah, so it's definitely the biggest thing, but I, I'm grateful for it as well because it, it means that I can really understand what the struggles are that my clients face. Yeah. And I think the way that, cause I'm in your, one of your groups, I think um, the way that you come across is that you're very authentic. So women can relate Thank to you far more than, you know, if, if it's just somebody saying I've earned five yeah. million this year and yeah, all that sort of stuff that just, and it's so, important to me. Like so many, so many times people reach out and say, Oh my gosh, like, um, you know, because I'm really open and honest about the struggles and that they're like, oh, you're just, you came across as a real person. People need to know that. Um, and also because of the way the world, I mean, like the world we live in now is so, um, you know, like it, it's not, it's so fake and it gets me, I get really cross because I'm, I'm always saying to my people, like, be careful who you're inspired by because you do not, that is not reality. I guarantee that's not reality. So somebody might be saying I've earned X, Y, Z. But like, you don't know how much debt they're in because of that or, you know, whatever the story is. But it's just yeah. like, be careful what you're inspired by. Um, and that's why I really like to keep it really real and be yeah. like, you know what? I'm totally on the, I'm, I'm work in progress as well. Um, and that's the fun of it, you know. Yeah. That's part yeah. of the journey. This is the journey. We're all going to be work in progress ongoing. It's just that I think there's the new level new devil in fact sometimes it's new level same devil that's come back up <laughs> <laughs> so who or what is your main source of inspiration um oh okay so i think that's changed over the time so i remember like when i first started my business like my that my motivation or my mission for myself was to be able to run a business that i could run 
create a business that I could run from anywhere in the world. And when I, and I did that and that was, um, that was my big driving force. But when I did that, when I'd already done that, I was like, Oh, well, what's my, what's my motivation now? So let me go back. So I was inspired then by people that were already doing that. So really being inspired by the people that are living the life that I want to live, which is really about create the thriving business, but have the life, like the business and the life. Um, so one of the people that really inspired me was Natalie Sisson and she yeah. really lived that life and amazingly again, like really shared how she did it. And I worked with her like right probably five years ago because it was just like, yeah, that's what I wanted. Um, and now less inspired by people and more inspired by my own goals and desires of like the life that I want to live. And I'm, you know, like constantly refining it because obviously as I grow, um, and I realized, oh, you know, like, you know, like just even on a daily basis, the things that I, the thoughts that I want to have and the, the way that I want to show up, what habits and like all of the, the, the package. So really inspired by, um, where I can take, you know, like my life to live that really big, juicy life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to have a person that's inspirational in today's age is, is really easy but also it's easy to connect with them yeah but natalie's yes. great because i connected yes. with her a few years ago on twitter and she was just you know she just connects with you and yeah. you can start conversations with her so i'd encourage any of the women that are listening to you know if you've got somebody that you want that is an inspiration to you just reach out to them and definitely and i'm sure they'll um, reciprocate I think so because we really want to help like people want to help like we all want you to live the life that is that you're that you that you want to create and that it's possible and that we can't do it on our own like we do need to have um, people showing us that are a few steps ahead of us of like what's possible um, you know I can rem I, I remember it was literally five years ago and I was like transitioning my business I didn't realize that this whole what I call it the online underworld I did not know it existed then when I jumped into it, it was like, what? <laughs> and it's like, this is amazing because it did allow me to be able to completely, you know, be completely nomadic. Um, yeah. Whereas I just hadn't realized it all existed. And like now it's so overcrowded and so noisy and quite fake at times. It's like really being careful about like who you do choose to be inspired by. Yeah. Yeah. The, the online underworld sounds yeah. slightly naughty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to be going how do, I, how do I get in there because it sounds <laughs> great <laughs> so now you've changed your life again slightly because you've actually settled I don't like to say that too much because maybe you haven't settled but you've actually moved to Malaga yes so yep. tell us what difference that's actually made to you to start putting down roots and having <laughs> a home and well, I have to say, it has been insane uh, comfort zone blasting stuff for me, which I did not expect. So the, the context is that the background is that I, I spent three years completely location independent, living out of a suitcase, traveling the world, growing my business. And that, and I, I didn't, you know, I always knew that at some stage, I didn't know how long it would take that I'd really want to get a, a base again. And I, I have to, test to just tell you this story. So I, um, I was in Canada and I was visiting a friend and I walked into her. She's got like this one bedroom apartment in Toronto and I was going to stay over. And I, I walked into her house and I, I saw this bookshelf with books on it. And I was like, oh, I really want shelves. And we just looked at each <laughs> other and we're like, you're ready for a home. <laughs> And then my friend was like, desires never show up that clearly. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, and so then I was like, oh, I wonder where in the world the home will be. And, you know, anyway, it's fast forward. It ended up in Spain, Malaga. And so I moved here, um, I, I don't know, it was like about eight months ago. And uh, I expected it to be really easy because I'm used to change. Like my whole life is really about like to change. And so I was like, yeah, this is fine. Um, but it brought up so much stuff that I really wasn't expecting. So I then had to go through a whole process of like really like uh, clearing, like lots of I'm not good enough stuff came up. Um, and this was all around, well, the last time I had a home and did normal, um, you know, I got bored. It didn't work. I was in a relationship. We separated. So it brought up all this stuff, which was just, I was like, whoa, didn't expect it. Um, but the other side of it is one of the reasons that I really wanted to get the, um, the, the, you know, to settle and have this base again was 
to create an offline community of people. Like we are, as humans, we need connection. And I have a, I have a, a, a really vast online community. Um, but, you know, that doesn't really always fulfill what we need. So it was about making friends, like having a group of girls to go and have lunch with and like simple things that people take for granted that wasn't massively in my life. I was like, yeah, I want that. And also really taking away, um, yeah, taking away a lot of the excuses around, I can only grow my business so far because um, I'm always traveling. Um, you know, I can't create a group of friends or meet a partner because I'm always transient. And so taking all that away and being like the next part of like my adventure and what I want to create is this connection and meeting these people and, um, and then seeing what I'm capable of with my health and my business when I'm not constantly distracted by always moving. Um, and it's really, it's really fascinating. So first up six months of like full on, Oh my goodness, this is tough. And then, and now it's all happening and I've got these wonderful friends and you obviously Costa women has been an amazing thing for me because it's introduced me to lots of people here. Um, and then somebody knows somebody and like, then you find your, you know, you find your crew and, um, and it's, I realize it's happening. Like the dreams and the desires and the things that I really visualized for having a home because I will still travel, I still travel, you know, for, for different things and uh, for work and things, but um, coming, just coming back and being like, I've had this home is, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty special. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm excited for what that's going to bring next. Yeah. 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 So would you say moving was your bright, shiny thing then moving around? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, it, it was also a process, a, a thing that I needed to do. I mean, I've all, I, because I was just like, unhappy unfulfilled and but then i realized that this is the random ironic thing about um how our minds work is that i was in costa rica and i was sitting looking out over this beautiful stunning view looked thinking about my business i work with the most amazing women why am i unfulfilled um and so then that all sparked this thing of like i've outgrown my goals i've outgrown my dreams and what was next and then it was the house and then to, it don't, it's not as simple as that. And to know that, yeah, you know, we can, I can give myself what I want, but it's also, um, yeah, it's a fascinating, it's been fascinating to watch because I'm also very self-aware. So I was watching it in frustration of like, ah, what is going on? And, I, you know, I got, you know, it, it was, it was like I went back four years in personal development. Right. <laughs> um, yep. um, but so, yes, there was definitely an element of that being the bright shiny. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's easy. Yeah. 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 So a uh, quick fire round. Mm. Favorite quote and why? And I know that's going to be tough for you because you love your quotes. <laughs> I love <laughs> the quote girl. I love quotes. It's like, yeah. chick, 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 which one should we go for? Um, oh, <laughs> I think for me, it's like that um, people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits create their future. And like the reason that I love, well, what I, when I first came read that, I was like, I always say to people, do that twice. People do not create their futures. They create their habits. Their habits create their future. It's like, OMG, that is powerful. Um, and that blew my mind when I really, really sort of dropped into what that meant and was like, are my daily habits going to create the future that I desire? No, probably not. Um, and so, so I still really, I, you know, I still always come back default to one of that as one of my favorite quotes because it says it all. It's so powerful. Uh, we, our habits create our future. And, you know, we get the choice. We get to choose what our habits are. Yeah. 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 Actually, my favorite Joe Bendel quote <laughs> <laughs> is um, the one, I'm probably not quoting it correct, 100% correctly, but if you don't have time to write down your goals, how are you ever going to have time to achieve them? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, and I think oh, I remember when I was going through your planner and I was like, that's a good quote. Oh, it's Joe Bendel. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's the so same true. surname as me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. Like we do get to choose, like, I mean, like habits is a whole big meaty thing, but ultimately like we've created bad habits. We can create good habits and yeah. we also can choose like, um, what do, how badly do I want this? Yeah. Like how much does it mean to me? Because I think that I spent a long time before I went off traveling and being nomadic going like that was, that's something I'd really like, but where I was, was not painful enough to make me do the big step. But then when you get unfulfilled enough or whatever it is for you, 
you're, you're, you, uh, the discomfort of staying where you are is more uncomfortable than actually taking the leap, which is scary. And I think that's the stage. You, when you get to that stage, you'll do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No, that's a great quote. One app that you can't live without. It's got to be Asana. Um, okay. I know I'm like, I don't, you know, like it's just, Asana is like a project management tool and I use it to manage my business. I use it to manage my life. You know, it is, um, it's what keeps me calm. It's like when I said, if I drop off the wagon, like last week I was really, really sick and I was written off for the whole week. But instead of me having, you know, being too anxious about what does that mean? I was like, I'm so supported by my systems. I, I can, like that, going into Asana, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, I, that was, it, it, it supports me. And I think that's why I really love what I teach is that we fall off the wagon, life happens, busy, we get busy, but our systems and the foundational strategies are what absolutely support us when life gets like that. Um, so definitely Asana, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. During 2019, I will, so it could be give up, start doing, or both. What is it? I will learn Spanish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be my goal. I was like going back to that whole, you know, the transitioning of being a homeowner and stuff. Like I really wanted to learn Spanish, but I did not have the headspace for it. So 2019 is, okay, I'm ready. It's all about learning Spanish. I'm going to live here. I need to embrace it. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And um, what book most inspired you in 2018? Um. <clears throat> I think that for me, because of like where I was with my mindset and stuff, it's a book that I'd read before, but Playing Big by Tara Moore. Um, and that is a really great book for somebody that, um, whose mind is very vocal in a negative way. Right. Um, and so it's, it's really, really good for the mindset stuff of like, we've got these voices. There is a voice that coaches us to be productive or successful and there's one also that wants to keep us safe and is like that you don't look very nice today um and so um yeah that was a some of the tools in there are just literally life-changing okay good thank you well we'll put all the links to the things you've shared below but also you've got a course coming up so tell us a bit more about the course you've got Yes. Um, so this is my signature program where I basically put my four step process into this beautiful system to allow others to um, create that freedom. And it's called Purposefully Productive because my goal in life is not to help you be really productive on the wrong things. So we really get very, very deep around what is it that's going to fulfill you. And most people don't know what they want. So really exploring what they really want. Um, and then getting clear about like voicing our secret dreams and being like, okay. Um, and then moving through like, how do we plan that and make that happen to the daily productivity and then like the reviewing. So like a four step process for actually the system, the roadmap that supports me to do what I want to do. Um, and yeah, so that is available. Um, and I'm, I, uh, 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 multiple times a year I run it live. Um, and that's really the only way to work with me now, unless you want to do like one-on-one -on -one mentoring or retreats or anything. It's like, oh, this is where you come and you learn the transformational oh, foundation. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Well, we'll put a link to the course below as well on the Thank video. Um, and it's been a great pleasure speaking to you as ever. Thank and you. Look forward to seeing you very soon in Malaga. Yes. And catching up with you probably online in your Facebook group. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat today. It's been great, Joe. Thank you. Bye.